Welcome back to the second part of the Attacking 2 podcast for this week's episode. Uh, I'm still your host, Jimmy Funnel, and I'm joined by fellow host, Ed Martin, as always. And now for our second special guest, uh, also a colleague from the Chelsea Echo, and very much known on YouTube as Addicted to CFC, Aiden. I'm out from Toronto. Lovely to have you on. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. It's lovely for you, you to join us at, unfortunately, not the best of times. Uh, we just lost to Arsenal. That was a bit of a, a crappy situation. Uh, so let's dive straight into this. Scene. What were your thoughts after full time? What, what did that game, uh, you know, what, what were your first thoughts of after that game? Also in regard to Sari's comments. Um. <clears throat> So first off, I thought at the beginning of the game, it was coming at a very important time in the season. We were six points ahead of both United and Arsenal. Spurs have injuries and we can make the ground up on them. And the performance on the field was uh, pathetic. The first half, they were all over us. Second half, there was little to no chance creation. And I was upset with the, the stubbornness that sorry has been using with his eleven. And I was surprised at the end of the game with his comments. I did think that, I think this is a manager who is trying to motivate his players. So I understand the message at the end of the game. Mm -hmm. But I found it interesting that he never, he didn't really shoulder any of the blame himself. Now there is something to be said about the player's determination, but I do believe that Sari has his part to play. Players like Alonso that have gotten repeated abuse, if that's a player that he's looking at that doesn't have the motivation or the determination to bomb down the wing, Emerson is available on the bench, and that's a tactical decision that Sari can make. That is actually quite interesting that you said because Simon Phillips uh, was had a completely different, well, not completely different, but quite a different perception because Simon was saying that he was fully backing Sari on the comments that he made um, as. The criticism for the players, I mean, as you said, it was pathetic, the performance. So the criticism for the players is definitely uh, valid. But a good the, uh, point you raised is uh, what, how much of the blame can Sari or should Sari be taking? Because if he doesn't shoulder that, he could be losing the team quite, quite uh, quickly. Um, Andy, would, would you agree with Aiden on that? Well, um, it seems to be, you know, uh, if, if, if I had it my way and uh, if I was, was speaking from my perception how football should be, it would be a, a completely different story. But unfortunately, well, unfortunately, as, 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 as things are, one has to say that a team and um, certain leading players have more power within a club than it was the case 10 or 20 years ago and you have to always reckon with that force and as a manager you have to also also um think about the power they have and think about the um, with with whole so of the social media and 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 the players becoming more powerful a manager has to also think when he says things out of emotion after a game what he um causes effects like which which effects he causes by um and in regards to that, I have to say, um, Sari should well find out that if he voices his concerns openly after a game, he should also. Well, I I think he's a sensible guy, and he's not he's not a dumbass, and he's he's someone who has even though he hasn't won anything, and that is always uh, the, the concern. He has experience, and especially what he can say openly and whatnot. So if one one goes by the notion that he knows that. Um, the signs are that there's a really serious concern about that because Sari isn't used to calling players out in um, in public, not in front of of a lot of journalists. So maybe the concern within the club is something that we that we can't underestimate because I reckon if Sari says something openly, he has told it already three or four times within the club, with within training, behind closed doors. So if he's concerned about the mentality of certain players. Um, and does it publicly, there's uh, maybe a deep-rooted story to that. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
thing is, uh, the I agree with you. I mean, some players will have noticed that. Um, Simon said before that he thinks that about 70-80% of the players will see a reaction. The question is, of course, those players that don't show a reaction, uh, which could be um, some of those that contributed to the downfall of Jose Mourinho and Antonio Conte previously, what will they what what will they do? What will their reaction be? I mean, as an ardent Willian hater, I'm sorry, I have to say it like that. Mm-hmm. I imagine that he'd be one of the first to say, hey, this is not fair because he likes assault. So how will Sari handle this now, Aiden? Do you think that uh, he'll get the player reaction he craves? <laughs> I actually think that Sari will get a bit of the reaction. I agree with Simon. I think the 80% makes sense. Uh, this is a group of players who's had this before with Mourinho and Conte. The public comments have been used at the club. And like you pointed to earlier, there is player power at Chelsea. And it seems to have caused the downfall of both of those managers' tenureships at Chelsea. That being said, the public tactics used in the media was like the first time I ever saw it was with uh, Jose Mourinho at Madrid and he did it to a lot of players Ozil specifically and he would do it a lot in the dressing room and I think what you see in um, Mesut Ozil's biography he he spoke about Mourinho's time at Madrid and the effect that things like that have on a dressing room especially on a championship winning dressing room and some players will rise to it and others won't unfortunately I think that some of the players at Chelsea who have been involved with Mourinho's downfall and Conte's downfall will probably do the same. I think it's key, though, that David Luiz and Jorginho, I think, are fully on Sarri's side. With Higuain potentially coming in, that's another big name in the dressing room. And I also think, personally, Eden Hazard, who's having a fantastic season under Sarri, would also be in the Sarri camp. So I think looking at someone like Willian, I've noticed that his attitude isn't the greatest. He doesn't look the happiest on the pitch, not always smiling. I think that's a player who could potentially be involved in the negative side of things. Uh, Alonso, on the other hand, seems to like Sorry, His comments yeah, from yesterday seem pretty good. I think there are going to be a few players who are involved in that player power. But overall, I think there's going to be a positive reaction from most of the players. Well, we can only hope that will be the yeah. case. I mean... We need a reaction on Thursday, undoubtedly, especially because uh, Spurs do have key players out. I mean, a few key players, all of them, in an attacking sense and in the midfield. If we lose this on Thursday, we have absolutely no one else to blame but ourselves. And the key thing is, our passing was slow. We didn't press. We didn't show enough fight, as Sari said. How do we fix that in just a few days? I mean... In the signing of Gonzalo Higuain would be a contributing factor to say, OK, signing can lift the players, um, can inject a bit of, you know, momentum. If he comes, you know, Wednesday morning at best and he can play, will he immediately have an effect on this team, Andy? I don't think if he comes by, by, to, by today, he won't play. Um, wouldn't make sense, I think, even though he knows the system, even though he knows Sari. Um, it can only have a such lo- psychological effect. However, um, you know, when, when I've heard that, that um, Kane is injured, Son went to the Asia Cup and Dembele went out the door, I, was, I found mus- myself almost celebrating um, a win prior to the game and, and, and thinking, all right, the chances are sky high now that we actually get a cup final in Sarri's first season. Now... After that weekend, momentum has completely shifted. Tottenham had a woeful game. Uh, Lorente was maybe the worst performing Spurs player ever I've seen play. Uh, terrible, terrible. Um, not even the David goal. <laughs> <laughs> did score a goal, yeah. Um, but however, um, they, they're winning the game in injury time. We have a woeful performance and everything seems to change completely in the momentum. Um I still think at home we have to bounce back. I think the players are demanding themselves that they are bouncing back, at least I hope. And this would be Chelsea mentality all over again because we've done it so many times. And it is a breaking point of the season, in my opinion. Not because uh, it will have any major effects on the end of the season or the the outcomes of of this season if we 
if we are winning at anything or not, because we can still win and get chucked out because we have to 1-0 from, from the first game. And if we go through, we still have a cup final. Um, but still, it is something that is mentality-wise extremely important that we win this game, not only by a scrappy performance, but by a really step up in performance, step up in mentality, step up um, by certain players that I want to want to step up. Because if you want to be a Chelsea team, if you want to be recognised by the fans, um, you have to step and fit into the boots of, of former teams that have done it. And uh, we've done it once or twice this season where we had crappy performances and then we stepped up. Uh, I want to see it again. I really want to see it again. So uh, I'll actually just add something to that. Um, today's uh, Telegraph article regarding Sari, uh, there were some comments made by him uh, in an interview adding to those after the game on Saturday. Namely that he won't be making a huge amount of changes. Um, of course, that was a bit of a clickbait uh, headline. Uh, it didn't have something to do necessarily with how many changes he would do in regard to team selection, but regarding the system. So we know he's not going to change the system, fine. But Aiden, how many players do you think could we see uh, get dropped on Thursday? Because this might be a cup game, but it's certainly a huge, huge game. We need a win. You'd expect him to come out with his best uh, 11. But who could we see be dropped after such a pathetic performance on Saturday? Do you I mean, to be... Will, sorry. Do you even think he will drop someone? Uh, to be honest, I don't, I don't think he will. Uh, I think the 11 that he's used, potentially one change. And I don't know who that could be. I think false nine hasn't been working too well, but I think he's quite set in his ways on the four through three, of course. But potentially, I think uh, he could use Barkley in midfield. I know that was the option that he used as a sub. I personally am against that move. I, if it was up to me, I'd love to see Hazard back on the left, Giroud up top, Pedro on the right, Kovacic, Jorginho, Conte, and then I'd like to see Emerson, Luis, Rudiger, Azpilicueta. That would be my ideal lineup. I honestly don't think that he'll make any substitutions. If he does make a substitution, I believe it'll either be Barkley or potentially Giroud. So that is actually also, uh, I think it was also in that Telegraph article that, it's so predictable. I mean, that, that change, Barkley, Kovacic, has happened 17 times this season. Yeah. You know, everyone knows that it's going to happen. They can more or less adjust to that. Um, add the questions to that, Aiden. Do you believe that Hudson Odoi should be uh, starting on, uh, on Thursday? If it was up to me, I would think uh, Hudson Odoi should get a chance. Mm. The idea of Sari's. I actually understand his idea that we shouldn't be changing our philosophy too much. We've seen teams, Pep Guardiola's Barcelona never changed their formation. They never changed their team because it worked. Ideally, the system should be working and then you don't need to change it. But what's working, what isn't working right now is Sarri's philosophy and his, his play style, which is quick one-two passing, moves on the break, letting the opposition pressure us, then going up the field with slick passing. That's what Sarri ball is meant to be. And unfortunately, the current group of players doesn't play at the speed that he wants them to. I think when Sari talks about determination, that's what he means. There's an ability to quickly ping the ball around the pitch and actually get the ball up forward, which a lot of our players aren't doing. Sometimes we see players like Alonso laboring slowly up the field, ruining our attacks. Hudson Adoy is used to the one-touch football. He's an extremely technical player. I think we've seen it through the academy and the games that he's played that he's he can adapt to the style. The only thing that I'm concerned about is that Sari always complains about his defensive side of the game, even though recently he said he's improved. But I think in a cup game where his defense will be important to maintain, that might be a problem for Hudson Odoi starting. But you make a great point. Potentially that is an electric spark that he could add into the game. On the left, if we do go with false nine, I think there's no reason that Hudson Odoi shouldn't be in contention with Willian or Pedro to start the game. Absolutely. I mean, the stats even prove it, more or less. Yeah. I mean, William has scored three goals this season, but that's been very woeful uh, as a player. I think he's going to be living off that goal from last week for quite a while. That's the problem. Um, Andy, do you agree with Aiden? Um, I agree as far as he said um, he won't change much because 
Um, not only that he has no real squad to make a completely wholesale change uh, of four, five, six players to, to the starting eleven, but also from a managerial standpoint, you could argue, well, he has given them um, a verbal pasting in, in front of, of the public. Now it's up to them, giving them the responsibility to do better. And if you change the, the personnel around, you're more or less not saying that you have the responsibility to do better, but rather I don't trust you, I give someone else a chance. So you have to take, if you are a manager, you have to take um, one of the two um, takes on, on, on the situation. You can also say, well, I, I don't, well, uh, Kovacic, you're not playing well, uh, Jokin, you're not playing well, won't happen anyway, but I'm just saying, uh, you, you're not playing well, I give someone else a chance. And you have to work harder in training or something else, you have to perform but I think Sari is rather someone who keeps his group of players tight and says, all right, not a good performance. Um, you have to do better. I give you the responsibility to do so. Um, so with that being said, one or two changes max. Um, and hopefully Hudson not in the starting lineup. So regarding those changes, uh, there's actually one player who I... Uh would absolutely love to start uh, not only on Thursday but generally from now on uh, I can remember him playing for AS Rome and he was absolutely phenomenal uh, as a player before he got so seriously injured and that's Emerson um, we have been linked with uh, or he's been linked with Ju uh, Juventus uh, in a move of about 15 million pounds which is nothing at peanuts nowadays yeah. and after just a year it's 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 ridiculous. I mean, I'm going to say, uh, pose this question to you, Aiden. but the thing is, one thing I want to add, how come he hasn't been starting? You know, that's a question. How come he hasn't been starting? Could there be a falling out? I mean, it's not only Conte, it's Sari now as well. Is there going to be something in training? Putting, I mean, he's clearly better than Alonso. He's been showing that this season. What do you think, Aiden? I'm... I agree with you. It's confusing as to why he hasn't got in. When I watched Emerson at Roma, they finished above Napoli. They finished second that season that he played, and then he was injured with the torn ACL. Um, potentially, it's a comeback from injury and his mentality. But from what I've seen of Emerson, in the Europa League games at least, he seems quite decent going forward, and he's usually quite good positionally on that coming back on defense. I think uh, Sari's comments earlier in the season about Alonso and height... Uh, if you, I understand that uh, Mario Rui, who was the left back at Sar uh, Napoli when Goulam got injured, was actually quite short, and Sari wasn't quite a fan of this. His uh, counterpart, Goulam, was quite tall, and that was the thing that he quite liked about his left back. So I understand the height issue, but Alonso has shown time and time again that he's not good enough for this Chelsea team. In terms of the Conte fallout, I think it was a little too early for him to come back with Conte. He was still coming back with injury. But something that's kind of been playing on my mind for the for the whole season is Pep Guardiola's comments um, to Sarri. And he said that you should focus on using 14 players in your first season. And from a philosophical standpoint, this makes sense. The tactics are difficult to implement. And implementing them over an entire squad of 25 players is more difficult than implementing it in a core group of players and then letting substitutes or the fringe players, you can call them, come in for cup games or things like that. So maybe he's chosen Alonso from the beginning of the season as he thought that was the main left back. But I can't see any defense for Marcus Alonso starting another game over Emerson. If he wants to talk about determination, I think competition for spots can do exactly that. And I would love to see Emerson starting. Good point. Good point with determination. I mean, if, if those players don't get the inclination to think hey i can actually get in this team why should they try and then of course that has a, a roll-on effect to the others that are the starters because hey i don't have to really perform i'm going to start week in week out anyway so uh, yeah. i agree with you fully there and the thing is um i understand also that concept with uh, what guardiola said 14 players but surely if one player is performing you know so bad for such a long time then you'd have to drop him anyway you know then okay then it's 15 players but yeah I mean, there has to be some different reason for this because as said it's not only sorry it was also with Conte and I'm a Marcus Alonso uh, no know something that we don't 
for him to start week in, week out, or there, there's just something wrong with Emerson. What do you think, Andy? Well, of course, in my opinion, football should be a meritocracy, and you should always have the at least the impression as someone who doesn't play that if I do well enough in training, if I do well enough when I'm getting a 10, 15 minute chance, I'd be, I, I even be within a shout. But um, I think what we see with Sari is um, that there is two kinds of managers. You have tacticians and you have motivators and Sari is a tactician. And it, it is a sign of, of great managers if you can be both like Pep Guardiola, but there's very few of them. And Sari is maybe not a motivator. It's also so when when he says players are not motivated, he can also um, say that from a personal maybe standpoint that he ha- he he isn't able to motivate players um, above the standard. Players should be motivated from from the beginning because they are professional footballers earning a lot of money and all this and all that. But obviously, every player has this level of, of motivation. It is the notch that takes him above that. And maybe Sari isn't that that kind of man because he's he seems very very down to earth very very mallow in his in his comments at least when when we are playing decent enough and not that crap against Arsenal so um he's not some someone like if if you're sitting in the room with Maurizio Sarri telling telling you something else not 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 even football do you think do you feel inspired i don't think so like he's he's an old guy chewing cigarettes and all that so maybe from that standpoint um i will say uh, I don't expect him to uh, to fiddle around and then, you know, putting putting Emerson in and then that motivates Marcus Alonso and then we have two decent decent left backs all of a sudden won't happen. Um, but yeah, um, Emerson over Marcus Alonso all day in my opinion. Okay, that's actually some interesting, uh, very uh, valid points you made there regarding Sarri as a person. But you know, surely someone who was so renowned in Serie A for his player managing qualities would be able to have that kind of effect on his players, right? What do you think? Yeah. Um, on the point of the tactician versus the motivator, I think, um, I actually disagree. I think that Sari is a bit of both. And I think we've seen with this particular group of players that they're possible, it's, there's possible to motivate them. Mourinho came in, first season was transitional, second season, title winning season third season, complete fallout. Players come in with hitting, they're fine. Conte comes in, motivates the players, title win, and then again, the motivation drops off and we have a fifth place finish. The group of players is the same. It seems like their own motivation levels are different and the manager's effect has kind of worn off. For me, Sarri's record in Sarri A speaks for itself. Mertens, Insigne, Calajon, these were average players at best and he turned them into world beaters. What's yeah. interesting now is that he's come to Chelsea and he hasn't, the initial effect of that little honeymoon period seems to have faded. At the beginning of the season, I think we moved the ball a lot quicker and the players are buying into the philosophy and now they're not doing, doing that as much. And for the first time in his career, Sarri's spoken about buying new players, which is completely against his philosophy. He's always said, I don't dip into the transfer market. And in that last press conference, he said, Potentially, we need new players to replace them, which is that was a very key factor to me in signaling that it's actually the players at Chelsea. We've seen the spine of the Terry, Drugba, Lampard, Ashley Cole, Czech go. There doesn't seem to be any leaders in the current Chelsea team that can actually show any sort of motivation that we saw in Munich or in our Champions League run or even in our title winning seasons where we had someone leading. You can point to someone like maybe David Luiz, Cesc Fabregas has left. I think right now what we have at Chelsea is more a team of individuals rather than one unit. And for the first time in a long time, I think there needs to be a massive clear out of not the squad players, but of the actual 11. I think players like Marcus Alonso, Willian, you could even point to someone like Pedro who's getting on a little bit in age. I don't think that these players are starting week in, week out for any of the other top four clubs. So it's interesting that they continuously see starts in the Premier League for Chelsea and some of them are even signing new contracts. Some very good points. Uh, well, good good points, but saddening points because that is exactly the case. Uh, we need a clear out. And the yeah. thing is, well, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen, first of all, over one transfer period. The summer will be a problem. Yeah, one second, Andy. I just mm. want to say this. Um, 
how do you get in leaders? You know, that that is a big, big worry because we had so many in that, you know, before 2010, not only the spine you were talking about, but for example, Michael Badak, uh, Mikhail Essien, and so on. They, they were all these individuals that had this fighting spirit and we just haven't got that anymore. So how can one really dive in the transfer market? Gonzalo Higuain might be one of those, but we can't say for sure. And he's only there on a on the loan deal. So yeah, Andy, what, what were your thoughts? Yeah, I just wanted to say, um, maybe the club that he's coaching now um, plays a massive role. Why players are acting different to his reign than they did at, at, at mm -hmm. Napoli. When you play at Napoli, the whole city is, is all Napoli. Everything is Napoli. And if you see the example of, of Gonzalo Higuain, he can't, he can't step one one. He, he can't even take take one step into the city now that he has left Napoli. He's an absolute. He's 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 the the arch enemy of any Napoli fan now that he has moved to to Juventus and then later to to Milan. So it means something completely different to the people. And players know they can't they they can't be mocking about. They just just can't be doing that because it is over for them once 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 they they're trying to do any of the. Like if, if some player at Napoli was doing the Callum Hudson Odoi stuff with the Instagram post and all that, you, you're simply not doing that. So it is a very tiny ego ego you can have at a club like Napoli. Then mm -hmm. Sari comes to comes to London, a big city, um, lo lots of opportunities for these players to make a living out of football after that, or even while they have a career. Um, you have to deal with different egos, and I think uh, he has not experience something like that and he has to adapt to that uh, also from a personal managerial standpoint yeah, but the thing is uh wouldn't the club have to at some point now realize hey this isn't just the managers that are the problem but it's the players mm. and start mm. selling some of those players i mean we we're at the point that this is this recurring pattern someone has to be aware of this i mean that uh, board <laughs> might not have so much footballing sense but from a, a human resources mm. Uh, perspective. Come on, I mean, any firm would mm. would have a, you know some kind of uh, a realization, a wake up call. Hey, something's not right here. But, so but Jimmy, people that come in and fail. It's not the place; it's the circumstances. I'm afraid. I mean, the circumstances will certainly play a big role in that regard. I'm not uh, disagreeing with you in, uh, there, but I think it's just also the players in. Respect to you know Eden Hazard. I love the boy. Uh, uh, oh, he's just Man. as old as I. I'm not going to tell him to say boy to him, but you know, point being, you know, it's just a different mentality they have that we've acquired over the years in those players uh, compared to the early days of Roman Abramovich, Abramovich's uh, tenure. Uh, so the thing is, we need some really hard battling personalities. Even you know. Even a person or a player like Raul Morelos, who was only here for one season, had more fight than three or four players combined in this team at the moment. And yeah. that, 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 is, that is really uh, boring. And yeah, I mean, but think, thinking to that, um, to the Spurs game, who can take up responsibility, Aiden? Who do you think could now go into that dressing room from the current crop of players that we have and say, right, you, 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 who he knows might have a problem, shut up, get on the field, do it. You know, start playing as sorry once. Who could be uh, that kind of player? I think you look to someone with a bit more experience. I think you look at a guy like David Luiz. I think you look at a guy like even Eden Hazard, who's been at the club for a quite a, quite a while. And someone who's kind of gone back into the shadows, which for me, has always been interesting and was always a main criticism for me of him is Gary Cahill. He's still the club captain, and I don't think we've heard a word out of him. And this was one of my big criticisms of Cahill throughout his entire, throughout last year and especially through Conte's time. Whenever we lost a game under Antonio Conte, the last person to come out and give an interview was the club captain, Gary Cahill, which was an absolute shame. I think now is the time even though he might be on his way out, and I think he's already agreed his, his move to Fulham. Gary Cahill has been at the club for longer than anybody and for some reason is having zero impact on any of the players. I mean, if you want to look at leaders and if you can't really buy them in the transfer market, 
typically what leaders are in the team are either people you've brought through the academy or people who have been there for a long time. Yeah. So it's a shame that our current club captain hasn't helped and has been more selfish in his time. And maybe there is things going on behind the scenes that we're not seeing. But certainly in terms of the public eye, I don't think Gary Cahill has done enough, which is a shame. But looking at players like Louise, looking at players like Giroud, maybe even Hazard, uh, these are the more experienced players. And again, like speaking to the idea of experience, I think one of our oldest players, uh, Willian, again, doesn't have that mentality of wanting to help the other players at all. And maybe even as Piliqueta, he's our current captain on the field and he hasn't been as vocal as he's been in the past when he has taken on that leadership role. So I think moving forward, it could just be a general reaction from the players, but I'm looking towards more of those three or four players to see if they can actually make an impact. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Andy, would you would you have anything to add to that? Funny enough, um, the name of William pops up when when I when I think about players who can do more, and 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 I'm viewing that from a standpoint of who is what what kind of performances are these players delivering, and what are they capable of? Um, the 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 most difference between these two kind of categories are with William. William can. If he wants to, and if he's on his day, he can play out of this world. We just don't see it anymore. And I'm, I'm thinking back to the Barcelona performance in the first leg uh, in the Champions League last season, where he, he ran the show for us, and I want to see that from him. And I think um, he's a big game player uh, when he wants to, and if he wants to. And um, I, I think Chelsea fans, when when they're singing the Tottenham William song and all that, and if he if he gets it going and if he understands how meaningful that game is, um, semi-final of a, of a cup competition, um, he can turn it on. And I hope for, for William to um, to change the game for us. I, I know I, I can see it in your face, Jimmy, that it, it's highly un- unlikely, but at least some, you know, some hope in that. It's not even about his skill. That He's got skill on the ball. I'm not even going to uh, disagree with you there because it is clear that he has got skills on the ball. Uh, he can be a really good at dead ball uh, situations. He's shown that. But first of all, he lives off that glory from that 2015-16 season when he saved us from relegation uh, for years now. And the thing is, my my real problem with William, apart from his consistency issues, is his actually something personal. I just think, I think Aiden also uh, mentioned that, or it was Simon, I, sorry, I can't remember anymore, but that the guy has had extreme motivation problems you know he he can't get motivated for games where you think come on we 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 need to win this game and he's just like sulking on the field and just his his shoulders drop his head drops you know it's it's just ridiculous i mean this is a professional player who's been paid a lot of money and then he delivers that kind of crap performance like on saturday uh Okay, given most of the team did that, but still, he would be that kind of a player that, you know, pundits talk about. He can take the game at the scruff of the neck and should be doing so. You know, he he has been a long servant at the club and he should be able to do that. And my biggest reason is, even though I was Conte out at the end, what he did with Antonio Conte, that stupid (laughs) social media thing, for me, he should have been sold the minute he did that. (laughs) I think... So a public, a public apology. Sorry, I know you're going. You know, it's not necessary. All the players knew he was going. Why do that? And that shows, or that epitomizes William for me. And those stupid, childish kind of uh, spats that he has uh, on the social media, he'll bring into his game. It'll be the same with Sorry. He, I'm sure he's one of the first. He's going to be saying, "Oh, I don't like that he criticised us," because William is a serial sulker. So I think we should have really sold him this January. It's a shame that we didn't. I get that the club didn't want to do it with Malcolm, but that's just the way it is. Um, lads, do, do you want to add anything to that, to uh, my take on William? Uh, yeah, I think for me, William's best game, uh, his three best games I've ever seen him play on a, on a field for Chelsea were the semi-final FA Cup against Spurs, which is, which is good signs. Maybe he'll step up. That Barcelona game that he was fantastic. And the third best game that I've ever seen William play was actually when he was playing for Shakhtar Donetsk against Chelsea. Other than that, I think he's had a lot of motivational problems. And I don't know, like he was fantastic in that game. And when he joined the club, it kind of went downhill from there. But I hope, I'm I'm hoping that with all of 
the injuries at Spurs that we can actually pull a win out and move through to the finals. Mm. So let actually let's end uh, this episode on that uh, note. So what would your prediction be, Aiden? I'm going to go a big reaction and be hopeful. I'm going to say 3-1 Chelsea. Hope you're right. Andy? Yeah. Um, I can see them not scoring as they don't have Son and Kane. Yeah. So I'm hoping I'm hoping for one nil and then maybe um yeah penalty shootout David Luiz smashing a top corner to win it for us. Yeah, let's see it. I think some 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 player that we've forgotten to mention and who will also be out is Del Ali, who has a knack of scoring Ooh. against us all the mm -hmm. time. He pulled yeah. hand yesterday, so he's out. Yippee! So I yeah. I, I agree with uh, both of your positive sentiment. I mean <laughs> Andy penalties. Still positive. We don't lose, no draw. So I'm gonna also say we're gonna win. Uh, what, what you said, three one, even right? Yeah, three one. Okay, I'm gonna go with two nil Chelsea um, because Stuff. all of their goal scorers out, and Lorente will just put it in back of the net. I, I'm actually gonna go for another own goal of Lorente. Why not? You know, <laughs> it's it's possible. So, yeah, okay, um, that concludes our episode for today. Aiden, it was lovely having you on. Thanks for coming. Thanks, guys. Uh, it would be great to welcome you uh, back in the future. Uh, yeah, thanks. From Canada. Um, yeah, that's all for today. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to The Attacking Two. Please do follow also Aiden on Twitter. His uh, tag is addicted to CFC. Um, follow, of course, uh, Andy and my uh, personal Twitter accounts. Uh, there's, all those links will be in the description below. And let's all hope that we get that win on Thursday. So we'll see you next week.